Hello everyone, good morning. I'm Christina Reni from the International Trade Center and I'm very happy to welcome you to today's webinar of Taste Online. Um, this webinar is to improve your digital strategy and it's uh, targeted uh, for food SMEs in the Caribbean. This is why I'm saying good morning. Uh, I know we have people from Dominica, from Jamaica, from Barbados, so happy to see everyone here. Um, that this series is an uh, International Trade Center initiative of the Alliances for Action Network. Uh, and we're doing this in partnership with Caribbean Export Development Agency. So thank you for Car to Caribbean Export for this. And, and that this initiative is funded by the European Union by the Organization of the African, Caribbean and Pacific States, the CARI Forum and the UK Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office um, under the UK Trade Partnership Project. So we're very happy to have all this support to make possible this, this webinar series. This is our sixth episode. And that for us, is, it's very clear to see how many things have changed over the last year and, and being online and being in the right way online has been crucial now for different businesses, especially in the food um, businesses. Uh, so this is why we, we have here today one of our market experts, Tamia Carey, Director of Stush Marketing, um, an agency based in Jamaica, so in the region, um, to take us today to a key element, no? So we need to be online, but what do we put there? So that's content creation. So that's why um, we have here, Tamia will uh, provide us a session on content creation. And thank you very much, Tamia, for being here and, and, and over to you. I think you're on mute, sorry. Thank you very much and good morning from Jamaica. And we're very excited to start today. Um, we're going to discuss content creation and doing it on a budget, little things you can buy, that when you have those things, um, it makes life a little easier, even if you don't have someone to help you when you are doing your content. Um, let's go. So um, I own a digital marketing agency, the oldest digital marketing agency in Jamaica, but we don't only do digital, we also do um, we also do TV commercials, we do research, branding, search engine optimization, websites, easings, photography, all sorts of stuff. Our specialty though is grassroots marketing and corporate identity. So um, we're 10 years old, yeah. we're 10 years old this year. So that's a big deal because we started just when, um, just when Facebook started. So um, this is our journey. Um, next page. So we, we believe in a 360 marketing solution and content creation is a huge part of it. The quality of what you get and what you do is a huge part of it. Also the story. You have to make such a good story that when they come back, they remember you. So it's very good that you may have had failure moments. You may have had little things that were wow moments, but all these things need to be encapsulated into the story that you constantly tell. So this becomes your brand voice. Um, you need to make sure that you set up the right Facebook and Instagram or you won't be able to do digital ads. So you have to make sure you're not you're doing a personal um, Facebook or Instagram page or Twitter because then problem is you won't be able to use the ad support. Um, getting data is great. We're going to show you today the back end of one of our stuff so that you can understand how to how to be able to see the data. So these are some of our clients. We also have a studio um, in our office. We have a full, a full studio where we do live filming and we film commercials for people who probably have a smaller budget that don't want to do on location and have to move all the lights and move all the stuff. Um, we work for many companies of over 30. These are some of them that we do work for all the time. Pepsi, the government, UN Women, of course, Tico and Carib Export as well. Okay, so um, when you look at this photograph, you'll see where all of this was done by our photography team. Um, Ting is our grapefruit drink that's at the top in the blue. So what we did was that we got a piece of plexi, we put some ice on top of it, some slices of grapefruits, the drink, a light underneath it, and we created that content. So you don't always have to think about that you have to do this huge production to create the content. Sometimes it's little things. If you look below at Rumbar, 
rum bar. Again, we went and bought a placemat. We bought some rosemary. It was around Christmas where you use rum in Jamaica to, with sorrel to make this drink that um, kind of like an eggnog for the USA. But yes, so you don't always have to go out of your way. Um, to the bottom left, you notice the girl with the necklace on and we've used a ting bottle cap as her earring. So it's a soft promote. You don't always have to have your brand too harshly in it. Sometimes it can be a softer thing, but it still goes across and people look further into the potter and they see your brand and they identify with it. Um, so you can also do custom artwork. If you notice to the third, the fourth one on the right, is rum bar again we went and got some sand all of this is in studio so you can pretty much get a white sheet go outside your house with a desk pin it up into the tree with the white part the um the, from the tree to the table so you have a nice white background you have sunshine you don't need no light and you just get these props and you start learning to create your content um you also have to understand that there are also graphic elements that can be helped on Canva that are free. Um, whenever somebody does a label for you, you ask for the label in a vector format so that the format is clear so you can put it on anything. If you notice the second photo, the Benjamins, that's a, um, a brand here that does a lot of pharmaceutical items, their logo is on the bag. So if it's in vector, you can move the logo anywhere. So when you're asking for your logo, you want it in vector on a black background and on a white background so that wherever you have to put it, if you're doing your own ads or your own creative, you'll be able to do it very easily. Um, so with a monthly campaign, um, data is readily available on social media. I'm going to allow you guys to go into the back end of my store today, because I have a clothing store. And we're going to show you how to read the data and how to understand the analytics and how to tighten your targeting. So that's very important. Um, so each week you don't set ads. Okay, so say you set an ad from somebody from 18 to 65, but then when you look in the analytics, only people from 25 to 60 clicked on it. So then you wouldn't waste your money and set it back down to 18 the following week. You'd kind of pull it up to 25. So it's very important how you look at your data and how you process your data in the island. Um, as I said, we, did, we do websites all the time, these are some of them. In the islands, the website is a cherry on top, but even if you could get your digital footprint started with the Instagram and the Facebook and your hashtags, it's great. Um, sometimes you can't maintain your own website. So you have, to be, you have to be careful what you use when you are doing a website so that you can know what's best. Everybody has a Zoom account because you're all here. So I'm assuming everybody has a Zoom account. Um, you need to also create content to make people understand what you're selling. Don't always assume that, oh, well, I'm selling turmeric and people get it. No, it might not be that. So for, it's good to be doing infomercials and little things on how to use. A Facebook store. So a Facebook store is absolutely free. No, nothing is better than free. So in case you don't have the money to do the website, why not put up your Facebook store, put your items on it, put what they cost and the people can inbox you and you can leverage the insights. You can create a showroom. So you, you can have your Instagram and Facebook account, but you can also have a Facebook store. Um, not all islands can connect to the receiving the money part, but you can work that out later, but you can have a showroom. You don't have to pay for a website. You can have a beautiful showroom on Facebook and set ads from there to that showroom. It's actually cheaper to set ads to the Facebook showroom, of course, than send it from Facebook or Instagram over to your website. So you just want to kind of figure out what you have available and what is you're able to do. We're not hearing it, Joe. Thank you, Christopher. Christopher, Christopher is saying we can work with WePay for payments. Um, Our team on this uh, every day uh, to accept. Basically, for the last couple of months, you know, I've been personally working directly with our team on this uh, every day uh, to accelerate this work. 
so we can help small businesses during this period uh, and and beyond. And you know the basic idea here is, is that any small business um, can can easily uh, start a shop across our apps to to sell things directly. Um, if if you visit someone's shop, uh, you're going to be able to see uh, that small business's uh, story. Uh, you're going to see their future products. Um, and and even check out and, and buy their items right right there. And you know this is new for us. You know a lot of businesses uh, use our social channels to get the word out online. Um, a lot of them use our ad products to to reach people and, and build their brands. Uh, but now with shops, uh, we're adding a new way for businesses to sell directly, uh, which is of course another piece of of this business puzzle. So. I want to take you through this, and and I'll tell you why uh, shops are going to be uh, uniquely valuable uh, for people and small businesses, uh, especially during this period. Now, first, uh, Facebook shops are free and easy to create. Even if you're just starting a business in your living room, uh, Facebook shops uh, give you the same tools to build and operate your online storefront uh, that global brands have, have had for, for reaching their customers. You know, if, if you've already put a product catalog on Facebook or Instagram, we can set up a store for you automatically uh, without you having to uh, do anything at all. If you use Shopify or any number of other business backend tools, uh, then with just a small number of clicks, you're going to be able to import uh, your inventory and create a shop across our services. Now, it's It's simple. And it's free to set up a shop. Um, our business model here is ads. So uh, rather than charge businesses for shops, uh, we know that if shops are valuable for businesses, uh, they're going to, in general, want to bid more for ads and, and will eventually make money that way. Um, we'll also uh, protect your privacy when you're using this. And we're not going to share who you, uh, what you buy uh, with friends or, or anyone else um, on our services with, without your, your permission. Um, now, second, uh, Facebook shops are available across our apps. Uh, you set up a shop once, and then that same shop is going to be available on your Facebook page and, and on your Instagram profile. Uh, and we're building integrations for Messenger and WhatsApp now, too. For small businesses, now this means that you can just set up an online shop once and have it consistently uh, available across all these apps. And for people using our apps, uh, that means that you're going to be able to have a consistent experience no matter where you're accessing a business. So if you message a business in WhatsApp, uh, you're going to be able to access their catalog and buy things uh, the same way uh, that you'd be able to if you were browsing on Instagram. If you put uh, an item in your cart on Instagram, uh, then, then when this is fully rolled out, you're going to eventually be able to uh, check out from Facebook too. Uh, it's one simple and consistent experience across uh, this family of apps which means that it is easier for people. And that, of course, means that uh, there are going to be higher conversions and more sales uh, for small businesses. And it's called... Tamia, you're on mute. We cannot hear you. <laughs> um, I no. saw Jeanette con, um, say that the buy now on Instagram isn't available. I'm not sure what island she is in, but neither Jamaica, but the Facebook one is available. So I guess they're rolling out slowly because it's been in the US for over a year. Um, so yes, it's true what she said that, um, oh, she's in Trinidad. So the Caribbean hasn't gotten the Instagram one yet, but the Facebook one is up and going, we know. Um, WhatsApp business is also up and going. Um, for my store, I make sure that all of what I have to offer is in catalogs. So if somebody calls and they say they want something white, you send everything white. And there's these places if you need to set up WhatsApp business on your phone so that you can also have an automated answer so that when people email you or not email you, when they WhatsApp you at night, you could do it for email as well they get a generic response saying we're open from this time to this time and we'll be contacting you as soon as our stores are open. 
and feel free to leave a message of what you need, you know, but there's no reason not to communicate anymore or to have these long extended waits. So I would tell everyone that for their business phone, they should download WhatsApp business. Uh, it keeps everything in one place as well. So that when people, once you save their names, you can go and whatever you put up on your live feed each day, everybody whose name you have saved, is if they go and check the stories, they can see your stuff as well. So that's another free thing. But um, I would definitely tell everybody to go to WhatsApp business, upload it. It's very different from the regular WhatsApp and it's so, it's so much more informative. Um, at the top right, there are these little dots and you can go in there and see all the different things that you can put in from your location to automated messaging to catalogs of photography of everything that you, that you carry. So in the future, when somebody WhatsApps you and they say, okay, well, um, what do you have? What do you do? What do you have any specials this week? Do you have anything going on? You could always go in like whichever album is going the slowest and you can't get rid of those things. And you tell them, of course, there's a special and you send them the stuff that's going slow. So there are different ways that um, WhatsApp business can really work for you. And it's an immediate gratification to the customer, which is a big deal. And no, it's a warm call because they reach out to you and then you can then reach back out to them. So on, on um, Instagram and Facebook, you can set the ad to your WhatsApp. So after you connect your Instagram to your Facebook page, your business pages together, so whatever is happening on Instagram, you can see everything on the Facebook platform at the beginning, which we're going to show you. And then you can set your ad that and then if they want more information, they click to through right through to WhatsApp. So that gives them an immediate gratification and it also shows professionalism. So I think it's very important that you think of WhatsApp for business. That was a brief um, thing of what's available on WhatsApp business. And I feel because Facebook bought them, it will only improve. So um, you got. Okay, yeah. Yes, you can hear me. When, when you have a chance, we have a question, someone that raised your okay, sure. hand. So no uh, we have Cleo Welch. Um, mm -hmm. So Cleo, I think that now you're able to, to ask yes, a question. Sure. Cleo is on mute. My apologies, that was a mistake. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, no all the time, it's fine. <laughs> it happens. Okay, <laughs> let's continue then. 
Okay, so now we want to think about content plans. So quality goes hand in hand visually. Um, so we just got out of the way that we're going to go home today and we're going to put automated messages on Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. So now you're communicating effectively and corporate-like. So these people think that they're getting their immediate response, they're getting attention and they're happy. So now we have to think about after we bring them in, how do we keep them? So the only way to keep these people is by having very good content. I make my content plans possibly a month in advance because during the month I'm doing so many other things that I only want to do if something very dire comes up, have to create that piece of content versus just having things to post um, when I looked on my Instagram and Facebook feed, I noticed that the women are on there usually after five o'clock or 4.30. So I usually post on Instagram at that time because that's the peak hour time. So you want to think about how are your story, how are you going to convert, what's your story, how are you going to convey it? Um, what benefit does your audience have being a part of your business? Um, then again, the target audience. So you want to speak effectively to who you want to buy your product so you can't want the lady in the supermarket like me the mommy to buy the product and you're communicating in slang or in 80 you're you're communicating like i'm this young chick 18 or 20 no 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 sir you have to communicate to your buyer how they want to see how they want to how how they they speak so they identify with your product and then they build trust and they want to follow you um, the attention span of your audience is possibly 30 seconds. So the long videos and the whole heap of stuff, the whole heap of writing, no, no, no. Everything needs to be very bullet and under 30 seconds for video so that once they buy in, then you can send them other information for them to read more. But don't over communicate or kind of draw everything out because emotionally they're getting a lot on the internet anyway so you want to do a softer promote and then get them to come over so um pinterest is going to become your new friend so when you go to pinterest and you put in content plans for social media for instagram for facebook they have existing content plans um jody can we go over to pinterest Yes, ma'am. So Pinterest is another one, so make sure to write that down. Um, put down content plans. Yeah, or content plan ideas. Okay, put restaurant now. Okay, yeah. So Jody, go up from mm -hmm. go back up to the top. There was one that said, okay, ca yeah, cafe social media content kind of open that up. So you can put in whatever area that you're a part of. So this person has this calendar gives you five ideas of what to create each week. So is it that it's trend, what is trending food? Whatever you're selling is the trending food. You remember that. So you just need to know how am I going to photograph it so it looks trendy? Do I need to be by the beach? Do I need to be on my balcony where they can see the city view and you take a picture of your product? How are you going to become that trendy food? But you want to do that trending food and you want to make sure that you fit in that space. Um, maybe pair it with something for Tuesday. So that was Monday. So now we're on Tuesday. What we're going to pair it with? What can we put with it? And it's non-competing, but it's an asset to my product that maybe other people buy. Then you can tag those people. So maybe if it's, say you do coffee, uh, maybe it's a creamer. So you put a creamer with it or a sugar or something. Um, and then with that, no, you tag that person. And maybe they'll also um, repost your post. So then you can get across promotion thing and so these content calendars are all over go back jody are all over pinterest um you can open yeah you can open that restaurant one so mm, it's very blurry let's go to another one that's higher quality scroll down go down to that those six tips um the middle with the target on it 
They also explain here how to get conversion. So Pinterest is really your friend. So you want to kind of go over there, put in different things. You may not put in, okay, I want a turmeric calendar or I want an Instagram turmeric calendar and get everything you want. But um, you can find other things that are, that are similar, maybe pharmacy, maybe um, cosmetics, maybe marketing, maybe whatever field, but you can look for things and kind of tweak them to fit you. Right. So I think you guys should definitely sign up for Pinterest as well. And not only use Pinterest to look at photographs, but use their marketing tools that are available. Um, back to the thing. So the next page. Well, well Jody does that. We got a question about WhatsApp. And it's sure. um, is from Andrew who asked if it's the same WhatsApp uh, for business than what uh, WhatsApp it's tied to your phone number. No, um, okay, yes, but you can have both on your phone. No, no, sorry, you can only have one on your phone. So yes, so WhatsApp business is tied to whichever um, phone you have for your business. Um, if it's that it's your personal phone, I would think it would be an upgrade to just move all your friends to the WhatsApp business and utilize it regardless. Um, for my business, I have a separate phone that's used for WhatsApp and to keep all the video photography, everything for this, for that business in one place on one SIM card. I save to the SIM card. I don't really save to the phone because once you save to the phone and it goes over 80%, everything is like a turtle. <laughs> but um, if it's that you're using your personal phone, you need to upgrade to the WhatsApp business on it and start utilizing those tools. It'll just make life easier for you to explain to everybody, you know? Did that answer any more questions, Christina? No, there's no any more questions on the, until okay. the moment. And thank so you. Canva now is an amazing, amazing tool. Jody, are you going to click into Canva for us? So Canva is free. No, I don't see your screen yet. Canva is free. No. Canva is free. Sorry, how many times am I going to say that? But it's free. That's cool. So what's good about it is you don't have to over, over process what you need to get done. So Canva is hip, it's turnkey and go to the um, flyers. Candace is saying it, it's like the best thing. <laughs> yes. Listen, I think so, because especially when you're designing on a dime, you want things that are up to date. What's good about Canva is that clearly some very young professionals work there because they're constantly changing and upgrading fonts and it's so trendy. So you can you can click on any of those, Jody. So we can you can choose Instagram. If you look to the left, you see that you can choose Instagram posts, your story, whether you want to do a look. Facebook. So when you click on these, they're automatically the size. Now, personally, I do everything in Instagram size and I do that on Facebook and on Instagram because when I set my ad, if you had done it um, fit, um, not square, sometimes you can only set the ad over on Facebook and it can't go over to Instagram. So I'd have to set a second ad for Instagram and nobody doesn't really have that time. So we're trying to be efficient. So um, you can do Instagram posts. So we can do, look, look on the Instagram post first, Jody right click on one of them all right so so where it says a new take on vegan jody click on there put in itc webinar yep itc webinar on lemons is that lemons what is that orange thing yes itc webinar okay on lemons okay so now make itc capital yep see we can change the size everything okay go over to the thing where they have um you can change that to the caribbean and latin america no please remember that when you're doing your ads you're only allowed to use 20 percent of graphics on it or it will go slower and show less people. So Jody could stretch out that and put it at the bottom of the page if she wanted, instead of over there. So we could, thank you, into a nice long line and put it at the bottom of the flyer so the flyer is not as junky. And then um, 
very nice. And it, you can also change the color of everything. So maybe you want the Caribbean and Latin America to be more pop. So Jody, could we change it to yellow? Or we could change it to a blue. So they give you a color palette, but you can change it to whatever your colors are. So this is like really, this is like graphics for dummies because I do well at it and I am not a graphic artist and my stuff look okay. So say I wanted to change the photo now, Jody. So click on the photo. They have free photos that you can use as well. Um, so say we want to put in, put in fruit, lemon, or just lemon, maybe just lemon. Okay, oh, yes. and let's go through and see also, what. Also mentioned that she feels like a pro, like a real pro that before 2015, she felt like she needed a graphic designer to do everything. Yes. <laughs> and also Felicia is also an enthusiast of Canvas. She says Canvas saves me, especially when I have ads to create. On and short saves time. that money, yes. And the thing is that, but well, Jody likes to use it because Jody's more tech than I am. She loves to use it from the laptop. I like to use it from my smartphone. It's so much easier. Jody, the thing has disappeared or writing at the bottom. But yeah, so see everybody's very turnkey. All of the all of the graphics that they have and the colors and the color schemes are already done. So it's just for you to now tweak it to the colors of your company instead and um, things. So go back now, Jody, and let's look at Instagram stories. Yes, and as Janet Marcel, as you'll also mention, you can also use your own pictures. Yes, um, of you course. You can upload them and use your own pictures. Okay, so now um, you can resize it if you wanted. So let's make it into an Instagram story. Okay, so look on this. No, keep it open, Jody. Oh, I should have kept it open. Um, so you can even get the business card too. Click on the business card. So okay, look on this page now. Don't start a free trial, but look on this page. Because <laughs> no, then we'll have to like fill out five thousand things. But um, you can also get your business card done. There are brochures. There are many elements to it. Um, go back to the. Just click on anything and then it would have done it. Anyway, to the left now you have invitations, Facebook posts, posters. So everything can be done. If you pay, I think, how much is it a month, Jody? Like five or six dollars? No, it's, in, it's now $11. $11 per month. Mm -hmm. That same flyer you did, they would resize it into an um, invitation if you wanted, a business card, a Facebook story. So you could get a lot done. And you get so much from it and you get can get photos from it. You can use your original photos. So versus a flyer in Jamaica cost um, six, five, 6,500. I know that sounds a lot, guys, but let's divide it by it's what? Six, five divided by 155 to one. So it's like $40 US to get a flyer done. So I would definitely um, want to go this kind of route. So next, Jodes, for me, next slide. So I hope everybody signed up for Canva, sign up for Pinterest, WhatsApp business. We're loading your phone today. And you need to go through your phone and check out the videos. You know, when you, your friends send you all these videos that I guess they're supposed to be funny or whatever, but they take up a lot of space in your phone. So you need to go back and take them out.
So what's great about Canva is that um, from your Facebook cover photo, so your Facebook cover photo should be, if it's not pictorial alone, you probably have some information there. So um, it's always best. Um, the next thing you want to figure out is what is your key marketing factor? What makes you different from everybody else? So you have to think that you're not the only one with this product. You're not the only one with this idea. Um, so in your space, what makes you different? Why I should buy you? What about you? So like in our marketing space, we like to boast that we're all female owned. That's a big deal to us because then that opens up to us to opportunities of female business. And there are lots of different grants and stuff for female services and female business owned entities. We also boast that the oldest person in our office is me. So you know that you're going to get young, great um, advertising from us because we have that generation here, you know? So what are your key marketing factors? How are you going to look on it? Is it from, uh, okay, well, th my product is handmade. My product is cheap. We don't like the cheaper route. As an artesian, it's the worst route to go. So don't ever say that your product is... Um, it's cost effective or try not to go from that route as an artesian, try and go from quality, from not compromised, from beautiful labeling, from um, your story, showing it in your kitchen, showing your children helping. It's a family business, you know, so try and go different ways, but you have to figure out what is key about you. Next one, Jody. Okay, here we go again, free software. So Canva, MailChimp, MailChimp allows you, I think, up to a thousand and something free um, no. email addresses, something like that. But they allow you that amount. They allow you a free, a good amount free of email addresses. So 500, that's a start, but it's free. Put all your friends, put everybody that you meet, ask for their email address. So like how social media will change and maybe Facebook is trending now on Instagram, but then guess what? Snapchat is here. So Facebook and Instagram are kind of trendy, but Snapchat is so much trendier. So they keep changing, but guess what? Their emails won't change. So you want to go and you guys want to sign up for MailChimp, sign up for Canva, sign up for Buffer. Buffer has different um, software tools that as well, similar to Canva. Canva I think is easier. Jody likes Buffer, but Jody's tech. So you have to know the space you're in. So if you're in the non-tech space like myself, you want Canva. If you know that you're good at troubleshooting and doing the other things, you go to Buffer. Somebody just asked a question. Hold on, Jody, pause that. Back in the they early said, days. They um, said, oh no, it's gone. Um, how do we see back the question, Christina? Uh, yes, so we have two questions. So there's one okay. that is, uh, Lien asks, uh, what is the benefit of MailChimp over mail services that include Shopify, that are okay. included already in Shopify? Okay, so I have Shopify, and I find that my open rate on MailChimp is higher than the Shopify one. So you'd have to try it and see, because really what you want is an open rate. So you'd have to try and see does the, how well does the Shopify one the Shopify one actually allows you to also link it to the cart so if somebody puts stuff in the cart and they didn't shop they didn't cash out you can resend them an email um, reminding them that the stuff are in the cart or you can actually just automate it where an email is sent a day after with people with things in a shopping cart but when I used to mail out from Shopify this is my personal opinion um, you guys may have a different experience. I found that um, I had a better response using MailChimp and then MailChimp had some templates and stuff that made life a little easier for us. We just popped our pictures from our photo shoots in it and the information. Um, what's the next question? Yes, so we have a question from Jens who says, hi. Back in the that early was... days of social media, you know, when you have... Okay, sorry. sorry. Uh, so he has a question about payment for the uh, online shop. At the moment, we have payment via bank transfer and PayPal. PayPal has a problem that we cannot use pesos. Uh, he's based in DR. Uh, so, it's, uh, it, so in the end, it's only bank transfer. We want to offer a credit card payment. All options I saw until now are only available if we have a bank account in the US or in the EU. Do we have a solution for this without using a bank account in the US or the EU? 
Well, my Shopify, he's right. And he has, he has checked it out. My Shopify goes to a Bank of America account because the fraud rate is so high in the Caribbean. They haven't really opened it up. But um, I saw where earlier some, some of our Caribbean neighbors were talking about WePay. So maybe he needs to go and check WePay and how that works. Um, they're giving less accounts also for the other thing you mentioned. What was it again? Um, there was an, the thing that he mentioned a while ago. PayPal, sorry. PayPal is giving less accounts for the Caribbean as well because of the fraud situation as well. So you have to figure it out. But I have Jamaican friends who there is a way to open up a bank account with a U.S. bank um he can inbox me and i can pay figure an out pay an air pay an air pay an air so if he looks up pay an air he can see if that works for his thing where they allow you to um receive it through a u.s bank account and then it comes to where your account is so if he checks pay an air he can see if that works but everything he said is absolutely true um shopify wants a u.s or canadian or uk or wherever else just not a caribbean bank account yeah, so we also have some other suggestions here for, from, from the audience. So Lien yes. so uh, says Stripe as well. Okay. I don't I didn't well, know Stripe. And Stripe. then we you have Janet, we have Janet that says we pay is usually. Uh, and then Andrew that made a comment saying non-resident alien account. But I don't but know. You're still going to have a to have a social for the non-resident alien account. You're still going to have to have that number. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I guess we also try. have Michelle Hinz who raised her hand. Um, so Michelle, would you? I'm gonna uh, <laughs> let you speak to see if you have any question or suggestion for Jen's question. Hi, no, I just um, wanted you to spell Pionera. P-A-Y-O-N. P-E-R. P-E-R. area. I think so. P-E-Y-O-N. P-A-Y-O-N. E-E-R. Once you Google it, it'll come up as something. Oh, thank you. Perhaps also Jodi, Jodi Ann or someone, we can, we can write it on the chat. Uh, perhaps okay. that's easier for, for people. Okay. Or Jodi, uh, look for the Google link and... Same. Yes, and we can put it on the chat here. Yes, no Andrew problem. said bank account. Yes, thank you, Jodian. We have we have a, a also trace it is. send it to everyone. <laughs> so thank you. Let's continue. Okay. You had to walk uphill both ways in the snow to send a tweet about what you were going to eat for brunch. You could use each platform natively within each app as its own brand. Now, centralized social media management tools are the norm. But which one's right for you? Well, good news, because that's exactly what we're gonna discover together in this video. Think back 10, even 15 years ago when social media was just starting to take off, when you weren't trying to develop your own personal power rankings with the MySpace top eight you knew you could easily manage your own brand's accounts natively on the platforms that you use. Logging into Facebook to use Facebook, logging into Twitter to use Twitter. I mean, come on, you get the point. Well, as you probably know already, those days are over. If you were to take that native approach to social media for your company, you'd develop a reputation real quick as being an inefficient time waster. You don't want that, and I don't want that for you. In this video, I'm gonna share with you our favorite social media tools for brands that will help you get a big result and look like a rock star to your boss. Are you ready? Let's do it. Built on the mission of championing human to human social, Sprout Social is one of the largest and most comprehensive social media management tools. It offers post publishing and scheduling, reporting and analytics, engagement monitoring, and social listening. Altogether, these tools provide a con You're on mute. Sorry, we cannot hear you. We're going to go to Facebook because I see that time is going, so we're going to speed it through my back end so you guys can just kind of see from there in a minute versus um, thing. 
So go to the back end of the store. All right, so we, everybody keeps telling you that you must go into the, the back end of, um, of your account and read the analytics. Hold on, oh no, my name is up. We're seeing your screen, Jody. We are. You don't have a Facebook tab open for us. Yeah, so they keep telling you, look at your analytics, look at your analytics, but let's go through the analytics really quickly. I don't see the Facebook, I just said a login. Um, so waiting, no, we see Christina. Well, while we wait, <laughs> perhaps one, one, things, uh, one thing I wanted to comment on is like when you had the list on, uh, you know, like how to differentiate one of the things that you, you have there is relationships. And I think that this is also a great way to think about content creation. It doesn't only have to be always about you but, and, or about your business, but you can also create those relationships with other for example, suppliers or, or clients um, that are buying or interacting with your product. Um, so let's say you are a chocolate, uh, uh, no, artisanal chocolate maker, and you have, you know, you source your cacao from a specific cooperative that may have any um, social media account relating with those, it's one way. Or for example, if one of the supermarkets it's promoting, let's say your product, you can also, you know, like create that relationship um, as a content creation tool as well of saying, ah, look, this is here. So also play with, with others, with, with people that interact with your business to create that content. And then maybe if you're available in a supermarket or something, maybe what you should do is go into the supermarket, take a photo of it on the shelf, and then maybe you can make a post to say available at and in stores island wide and kind of that can also become part. So every time you see your brand somewhere, you should try and make photo or video content from it. Also, you can carry it in your bag. I have a friend who carries her carries her coffee in her bag and wherever she goes, she snaps that shot. So when she's um, having dinner, she takes a photo with it. When she's at the beach, she actually pops it out on that beach towel and she takes a photo of it. So it can become second nature to you after a while. All right, Jody, go to the inside. So this is my Facebook page. Maybe should we show them the Facebook page first? Um, Yes, you hear Jeanette, she always has products in her car. <laughs> That's right, because you are your brand and the more stuff you can get, the better, you know. Um, okay, so here now we're going to look at the analytics. So it shows you from July 22 to 28, when we went, okay, so the summary, put it to 30 days, Jody. So at the top, you can see the top left. So we've checked on the insights. Jody, I think you should go back because I don't know if they saw when you check, you click the insight thing. So go back to click twice. One, one, two. Okay, so, um, right. So we go to the front of your page, we click on your page, and then we go to insights. So go to insights now, you scroll down to insights. To the left, you pick it after which um, you can go to see how your page is doing. If you notice at the top of it, it says page summary in the middle, sorry, Jody, the last seven days. I normally look at my analytics over 30 days because if you look at seven days, you're going to be depressed. So let's look at the 28 days. So in 28 days, it shows how many actions on the page, how many people viewed my page, how many page likes I got, how, many, how far my stories reached. No, stories are free. And the reality is Instagram and Facebook, they actually push the story more than your photo. So you want to load your stories on a daily basis. So you see that story reaches, that's free of 7,902. Um, my post reach is 158, but I'm paying ads for that. So go down more, Jody. Um, I got 181 page followers in the past 30 days and our post engagement was 55,000 people. So that post engagement, um unfortunately it's because i've been paying for ads 
It's not because they're pushing out those posts of my photographs of my clothing. It's because they are, um, I'm running ads. Go down more, Jody. So now you see the ads, stop here. Okay, so you see the re the organic, you see the reach, the organic, the paid reach, reactions, comments, and things. So if you're looking on this, it's very easy to see which ad is doing better than which ad, you know? So then you can say to yourself, okay, well, maybe um, I should re reset this ad. So this is the post on the page. This isn't ads that were set. So when you look on it on the post on your page, then you can say, okay, which one had the most engagement? So we noticed that one had 22 people. And so that was, a looks like a red beach cover up if you had really good eyes. And then, so we can boost that post because that post has the most interaction. So that means that more people are clicking on that post. So Facebook and Instagram are showing it more. So I would choose that and say, okay, great. That's going to be one of my ads. Um, let's go to followers, Jody on the left side. Okay, so now it's very good that you look at your followers on the page um, to create your benchmark. So you want to scroll down for me, Jody? No, on the right. So it shows you the different times um, of day. So this is statistics for 30 days, almost 28 days, yes. Okay, so you notice on the eighth, we need to go and look why there's that big dip. So on the eighth, you see where the tunnel kind of drops down to nothing. You guys see that at the bottom of the V? So that meant either um, my ad finished and I forgot to set it, or um, Facebook had a glitch on that day, but we really need to ask and figure out why we'd have a consistent 80,000 and then drop to zero. That's, well, not zero, but a thousand, which is kind of not so hot, you know? Um, let's go to the page. When you go page followers, so um, it shows you how many unfollowers, how many organic and how many paid followers you have for the period. Um, that's important because if you're getting unfollowed, why are you getting unfollowed, you know? So you want to look on that. Also, if they're spamming your page, because sometimes some people are sending different things and they'll put stuff underneath your post that's highly irritating, but then it spams your page and then they unfollow it. So you need to check what's under each post as well. Go down a little more, Jody. Um, so... This is another thing. It says, what are, the, what are the charges like for ads? Well, well, the Caribbean is dirt cheap. So per click, I pay like 0 0.001 cent, sometimes 0 0.01 cent US. So it's really cheap. Um, I know when I run ads in Barbados, it's pretty cheap too and Trinidad. So it's not like the US. The US ads start at like 33 cents. <laughs> so it's a big difference. So um, Advertising in the islands is different, you know? Um, okay, so let's go on the front of the page, Jody. We also have a question from Michelle Hint, who raised sure. her hand. Sure. Michelle, you. Yeah, um, I was just wondering, uh, are you managing different companies on this one Facebook um, page? Yes, so we are a company, so no, so you're managing it on the one email account, but you're just a user. So each different, the different people in our office, they're put as users on whichever page their account managers for. So um, when you have a business account, Jody, go to what you can add a, um, scroll down, scroll down, um, add center, edit page info, or set, or is it in set, no, settings, go to settings. So when you go to settings, when you have your page, um, you can then go down to page roles for me, Jody. Okay, so on the left. So these people are admins on my page, editors, not an admin, because an admin can delete your entire page. I'm the admin. So okay. when I have other people working on my page, they become editors. So we get their email address and we add them to the page. Right. So um, if, sure. Sorry. If I wanted to manage different companies, can I do it on one Facebook page? Yes, of course, because it's going to be attached to your personal page and then they're going to give you administrative rights, whether you're an editor, whether you're an ad setter or they offer different things or a moderator. So, um, yes, of course. Yes. So, so one you, page I, is for one business, Michelle. One page is for each business. 
And right. it's through your individual personal account that you can manage different pages from different businesses. Right. But it has right. to come from an individual or personal profile. Yeah. With one page, you cannot manage different uh, businesses. It has to be through one uh, personal profile. So if, if Jody, go back to the front page, Jody. So when you go to the front of your page, um, you can see that, um, scroll down for me. If she was to type on the page, so type in the comments, Jody, use underneath that thing. By default, one of our own, our admin was made owner of the page and we cannot change, we've tried. No man, all you have to do is send your company paperwork to Facebook and you can get back your page. So don't worry about it, I can't hold you. The latest um, question a while ago was that, yes. the latest question Sorry. a while ago um, was that um, the admin has gone with her page, whoever she gave to do it. But once you have your company paperwork and you send it to email it to Facebook and you come back and forth with them and you can get back your page. It's a little tedious, but you can. Once you have your company paperwork and you can show that you are the true owners and that kind of thing. All right, so Jody got underneath the, um, the photographs and um okay so we have this add up right now this set of things go down and type in the comments so go to a comment on the right side just type and when you type in it you will see that you're responding as the page so on the page you don't respond as an individual anyway so when you reply say thank you and you see that um you have responded as an author and as the page so that's right. important to, to always check that when you're responding on the page that that's what it's set to. So that all who manage your page, that their information is not all over the place and everybody knows everything. Um, go back to the... We also have a question from Candice about uh, the comments. So while we're here, so she said, do you think we should remove um, uh, spam comments? Of course, yes. And I get a lot of them. Once you're running an ad, there are these people who are doing, is it crypto or on Forex? Oh my God, it's like the new thing to just slap their ad underneath. So you're paying for the ad and then they slap their comments with their how to reach them underneath. Very low, I think, but yes. So Jody, if you scroll down underneath that, um, that page post for me. So under the page post, no, so stop, stop. No, go back up. You see how many people it's reached, how many engagements. So it's very easy to boost the post. You just press boost. Go to the thing and let's boost. Press boost. Let's show you the ad preview. Now remember, we spoke about targeting earlier. So say we're deciding that we want to sell in, um, in Trinidad. Now, when you're setting an ad, you want to make sure that there are at least 300 people, 400 people in your ad. So if your island is small, maybe there's an island that you want or you can send stuff to, add that island, island as well. So go to audience details, Jody. So I, right now my ads are set within a 10 mile radius of my physical location. Um, for the islands, you don't need to do that. I would just put island name. So we need to see who's gonna buy the product. So let's say 20, change it from 20 to, to like probably 45. And then only women need to see my ad because none of the men are going to come and buy the dresses. So let's put it on women. Women. And then maybe I want to see if Barbados will buy some. So put in Barbados, Jody. Barbados. Country, the entire country. Trinidad. So this is another thing because they're, the countries are smaller and the radius, it just makes sense to just put the whole country in. Um, Cayman Islands. So now I'm at 7, 760,000 people putting Cayman. No, I'm there right now because I haven't defined the audience. So go down some more, Jody. So here you see where um, the reach is a possible of 780,000. All right, Jody, now click on it and put in. Um, plus size in the detail targeting. So we're gonna define the target now. So that's the amount of people available, but that may not be who would buy my product. So let's put in plus size clothing. All right, now it's dropped to 160. So you said to yourself, okay, should I leave it at the 160 and try it for a few days or no? 
So take out that now, Jody. Take out plus size clothing because that has squeezed me down way too much from the 780. Let's put in um, people wanting to be married. It's white dresses. Let's say, okay, people engage. So put in engage, Jody. Engagement. Yes, there we go. Engaged. Engagement. 190. Okay. Put in a maxi dress. You're long. I think it's because you put the space. But you can pretty much pull whatever you want until you get it to um, where you want it to be. I don't know, that's strange. But... And this will now define your audience. But personally, I wouldn't set an ad to 190 people because then it's kind of small. So you want to build it out at least to 250 if you can. So engagement, you can also put in their bridesmaids. Put bridesmaids, Jody, and see if that helps. Because maybe the bridesmaid hel helps you to make the decision. Okay. So, okay, we're at 210. So we're getting there. We're getting a better situation. So you guys have to be creative. Know your product and know who you're selling to. Because guess what? The, put in maid of honor. The maid of honor might bring the bride to the shop. So you just want to kind of figure out a way um, how you're going to. There we go. Maid of honor. Okay, we're still at the 210. So the bridesmaid and the maid of honor might be in the same pool, but that's fine. But you want to be creative when you're making these ads. And so that when you reach your audience, think of the, put in yoga, Jody. Think of the, um, the lifestyle of who is buying your product. So when you put in yoga, now we're at 380. So that's a wellness and whatever, you know, but think about it. You don't have to just specify people who want clothing. It can be a behavior. So we can come out of that, Jody, and go back to the um, go back to the PowerPoint. I'm trying to rush now. Don't worry, Christina. We're almost finished. And thank you, everybody, for bearing with us. Um, so we're not seeing the screen yet. Do you have any questions in the meantime, Christina? No, we haven't received any questions uh, yet. Okay, so uh, there's a hashtag calculator. Go back, Jody. So you guys need to Google hashtag calculator, put in what your product is, put in what the behavior of your products are, and they will give you 20 that you can just cut and paste. So we don't have time today because I know that we're really strapped. But um, you want to get the hashtag calculator. So write that down, Google hashtag calculator, and they'll give you 10, 15 hashtags that you can take out. And your country should be one of your hashtags and made in whatever country as well. Next one. So creating content, we went through this. Um, there are many ways to do it. You guys can photograph this page. Um, okay. So you see that thing that he has taking the photo, Jody, go to Amazon and show them where they can get it. So on, this is great. If you have nobody that was, um, holding your hand or can hold the phone. So here we go. So this great item it's, I own them in like, I have quite a few. So go back up and open up one Jody. Right. So this can be clipped anywhere. You can clip it to, um, to a cupboard, to the table. It has a clip at the bottom. That's really amazing. You just, so this now becomes your extra person. You put it on video. You make sure that you're being seen. And then you um, create your content. So go back to the content thing. So you guys can look on it on Amazon. It's like $17 and you even have cheaper ones too. So you want to also think about who your, con who you, your content is going to. These are great stuff. Um, maybe you want to have testimonials from your customers, very important. If a customer had a great experience, that's like the stars on Amazon. When you're buying something, you want to say, okay, well, at least it must have four stars because if not, we know this product is just going to break on us after we buy it. So you want to get reviews because reviews are like um, that star on Amazon. Why not have it for you, you know? So you want to look on that as well. And then maybe highlight, um, new things that are happening for your business. So this is all your content calendar ideas. Here, you guys can take a photo of this with your phones. Um, giveaways, breaking news. So 
the thing about the breaking news, I tell you that I do all of my content 30 days ahead of time. I have to, because if there's a breaking news thing about it, then my team can do that one thing for the day. They're not then thinking about what they should have posted yesterday, the next day, plus this one thing. So it's good to do everything ahead of time, proof it so it's not as pressuring and um, stuff. When you take a poll as well in the live feed, um, ask people questions about your products. It also goes viral very, very quickly. So you want to think about that as well. Next page. Christina is going to run us soon. Okay, so huge suite. Take a photo of this page again. This, these are great stuff to get if you can have it. And it can help you with scheduling software. And so maybe it'll get sent a ping to your phone to say, hey, Christina, you haven't posted the flyer yet. And then she can go over, take the flyer out of your phone and post it and whatever. So it makes you more organized because sometimes your day gets overwhelming because a lot of you are one man shows you know next page okay so um the product showroom very important so remember when the guy was saying he has that free facebook um thing and all of that but your instagram is also a showroom so don't put your personal things on it i beg you if you could make it look as organized as possible around the product that you have you don't have to put birthday shout outs on it. it's a great customer but um try and keep it business like if that's your business instagram don't mix the two because then people stop following you because they're following you for the coconut oil the turmeric or the chocolate they don't want to hear that you're at the beach unless the chocolate is at the beach they don't want to hear that you went you know here and here are my friends no so you guys try and keep it as um product showroomy as possible next page jody um okay again record the process from start to finish don't worry that your family's there don't worry that there's background noise because there might be something funny and you guys are caribbean people so you guys are usually very funny or somebody cussing in the background your mom or something clip that thing up and record yourself don't waste time record everything and then you edit it down in one of those free tools we gave you next one okay so now brand ambassadors okay so yes they may say sold but it could be that they're holding your bottle with their cup of tea or something and they send you that photo, it's worth a lot because now you're getting validation and somebody is enjoying your place. You can see this man on a great vacation, I'd like to go here. And then they get a photo of him photographing the place. He looks like he's a professional photographer, but again, this post could do so much because then now your little network of people can see it as well as their friends. So think about your brand ambassadors. They don't have to be people you pay. They could be ordinary people who buy your product and testify to it. Here's another brand ambassador. We have to like rush now, sorry guys. But at least she tells you how she cooked it, why she cooked it. It's gluten-free, key, key selling point. And um, she's a foodie, so no, other people who follow her who are foodies might decide to buy the product off of this post. Next one. Um, go past this, Jody. Help his business. Boom. I don't have to be a major celebrity. It's right. So um, we can um, think about content, think about Google ranking, think about what can be positive and what can be negative for you. Um, Content and duplication can be negative. What they like on Instagram may not be what they like on Facebook. So if it's possible for you sometimes, I know we're asking a lot, but if it's possible for you sometimes, maybe you can have different content for Facebook because it's an older audience. They're like 35 and up, 28 and up. So um, their content and what they would like to see is different from somebody 16 to 30, you know? So try not to just share all the content at the same time. Try and, if we can, make efforts to have different content. As well as video content goes a lot further than static images. Next, Jody. Okay, so um, this is coconut oil. Anybody who does coconut oil, you can photograph this page. So there are many ways to push your coconut oil, health, beauty, and food. So you could have a coconut oil, but it's just so much more than that because now you can show them different ways of using it. Um, and you can interact with different people. So sometimes you can set health ads, sometimes beauty ads, sometimes food ads. So think of your oil holistically. Coconut oil, I use it in my children's hair, I use it on their skin. So don't only think of it as a cooking item, try and see from a broad sector, how else? Um, it's a superfood right now for 
Alzheimer. Think about that. So maybe some of your ads should be around that. And when you're setting your ad, you can actually pick people who are suffering from different diseases as well. Um, next one is turmeric. So turmeric is extremely trendy right now, especially for the face mask. So the whole of Jamaica is face mask. Can you tell with this turmeric? <laughs> um, it really clears up your skin. It has a beautiful glow. So we could set some beauty ads some days on your turmeric. We could show some people drink it in the mornings. Um, my mother actually drinks it. And so their health benefits, beauty, food. So again, try and stretch your thing out so that you're not always doing one type of content. Mix it up because maybe when you set an ad to a health person, you get them that week, maybe a beauty person another week, maybe food another week. So you can look at different angles. Um, so coconut no is all of these same things and even text style actually because there are people who do coconut bags i don't know how far you guys go with your coconut but they're different things they do a lot of jewelry out of coconut as well so kind of try and look on what your waste product is if you have the waste product different things you can do diys at home but make it new and make it fresh so um we spoke about most of this already making our profile great, use the social proof. Um, be sociable, don't just sell them all the time. Tell them about the product, make them enjoy you, make them want to have your brand. Next, Jody. Oh, great. Okay, so we're really sorry, Christina, for going over. No, <laughs> going no, no, over no. So much, but um, as a small business owner, I think it's important that they got to look at those things because we can see it, but it's different when you go in the back end and you can actually really see where you're supposed to click and it kind of helps you a little more um do we have any questions maybe until now no so while yeah. the questions come if someone has a question so i see i see here janet let oh. me say janet can you speak wait one second can you see can you speak now yes hi you hear hearing me right Okay, yes, so yes. quick question. Um, I'm a chef and I created my line of products. So I was doing another course before I just used to have the products alone on the IG. But recently someone told me that I should incorporate some of my chef stuff on it. And I did. And I saw that, like, for example, some of the posts, like I would post, you know, me doing something or me working at one of the restaurants. And it kind of was getting a lot of, a lot of feedback. So is this is a good thing or... About because it kind of when I look at the page, it didn't in terms of the aesthetic of the page, it kind of have okay, granola, granola, sauce, sauce, and then the chef person standing there. So, is well, I, like that? I think what you need to do, I think it's always great to branch out, especially as a chef. For some of us who probably don't cook so well, we'd be real happy to buy your bottled product. <laughs> or your package product. <laughs> so um, it's also probably getting product shots to add to that and probably how to use your product. Um, what did you say your product was? Granola? Granola. Um, I have a line of clean granola and unique sauces, pepper spices and chocolate sauces using our local chocolate and scorpion pepper. Okay, and what island is this? And Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad. And I so use maybe... a lot of coconut as well, coconut grated, well, it's the grated coconut mixed with the oats and the coconut nibs and coconut oil, honey, baked and packaged. Okay, so what you want to do is I would want to have photographs if you're in any place, are you in any supermarkets or anything, or if you're doing delivery. Yes. So, you, so you want to have yes. a delivery communication, you want to have what your package looks like. So I recently changed my packaging to have, from um, finished product to paper. And so I posted um, in a next video where I think it was the other ladies where they said, do the back and the front, the food and nutrition, as well as the, so I tried that. Oh, well, <laughs> what they were saying is like, <laughs> post the actual package itself, take a photo of the package, but you want to do back and front because you want to do what the product is and then you want to show. No, the no, I would take the picture of the front with some coconuts beside it or whatever else and kind of stage it. And then in my caption, I would use all the hashtags of the stuff that's good about it. Um, okay. Maybe it's gluten free, maybe it's whatever, and put information in there so you don't overwhelm them with this front and back. Because when I'm looking on it on my phone to read 
to read your the back panel would be so difficult you know so i would rather put more emphasis on find me this is what i look like almost like how they do a billboard the billboard is placed somewhere you weren't hungry then you drive past this kfc billboard the kfc is like 10 feet down the road and then all of a sudden you want kfc so you want to think about it like that so show the front of your package show it nicely photographed or stage with your phone if you can take it outside where there's natural light it's always better less shadowing um and show how your product can be used in your information thing you can also put what is in there's a part in your bio that on different instagram and facebook you can put the different that information the back but sell the front because if they don't know what the front looks like they can't pick it up so i wouldn't really the back stuff i'd put more in my caption to not make facebook flag me and i have too many wording or too many things on it and then it can go out as an ad Okay, um, okay. So you want to do the communication post, where can I find you? You want to do the post of how great your product is. You want to do a story post. This is when I started my product since 1980. You want to also do a post of how I utilize the granola. So it could be a cake and it's nicely icing and you fling the gran granola on the top. So not fling, sorry, throw the granola <laughs> on the top. Sorry, sorry, that's very Jamaican. Throw the granola <laughs> on the top. Maybe it's that your kids are having cereal and you have this kid that laughs and smells a lot. Give them a bowl, sprinkle the granola, the spoon in the bowl, that's more content. As well as you as the chef, because a chef is just an amazing job in that if we're getting it from you, you're so supposed to be trained and 500% better than me at home trying to make it. So the simplicity of getting your product, buying your product. So you can probably look on your um, guidelines more like that if you want you can inbox us or email us and we can okay, help okay. you a bit but think about other things to build out i agree with you it shouldn't just be you chefing all the time because then it kind of loses <laughs> your product thanks yeah. great i also wanted to also uh, add one thing here um i think that the suggestion of photographing the product fr uh, from the um, front and from the back it was also from the photography uh, session that we had and it's because these photos you can use them for example for catalogs so perhaps right. not about you know like the the back of the label for instagram right perhaps social media is not the right channel for that but that photo it can be for used sure. for other like b2b um let's say yes, for sure yes i uh, agree with you christina I, we have Just, another question Tammy, sorry, for no you problem. that i don't want to leave out I just uh -huh. also wanted to mention to everyone before you leave is that uh, next Thursday will be here and this question is related with also next week's session that is going to be on Instagram. So we will be waiting for you. We'll have also Gabriel uh, Agostini, who's also uh, uh, an entrepreneur from the Caribbean, from, from Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, so she's from um, uh, CGA um, in Trinidad and Tobago, uh, working with coconuts. Uh, but in the meantime, we have Nick Davis that is asking, what is the converse, conversion rate from Instagram to actually orders? I have seen great contacts, lots of followers, but re little real traction in orders. People know the brands, but they don't know that. Uh, but does, does that translate to sales in our Caribbean markets? What is he selling, though? Chocolates. Coconuts. David is from One One Cacao. Um, okay, and what, what, is, what is his portfolio of the coconuts? Just the... Raw coconut or is it coconut water? No, is it chocolate, chocolate, sorry. Chocolate, chocolate sorry. Okay, chocolate. chocolate. Sorry, so, Nick. <laughs> chocolate. Sorry. Not <laughs> chocolate. Okay, so for us, I find that um, for clothing, Instagram and Facebook work very well. But for food items, you're really appealing to that mom who's coming to the supermarket a lot. Um, so Facebook might give you more traction than Instagram, but then are you communicating effectively? So even on Instagram, if you're not putting a call to action on your thing, then buy me no, no available in the supermarket, five minutes corner store, great for after work. You have to communicate and have that call to action as well. Are you using the call to actions or are you just posting? So you have to think about those things as well. Um, how are you marketing the chocolates after after dinner with Boo? Buy this great chocolate, put it on the ice cream. So you, there are different ways and different things, but you have to communicate and have a call to action on Instagram. You have to figure out how your Instagram crowd communicates. Do you need to ask them questions? They're a little different from the Facebook crowd, the Facebook crowd to talk more. So did he say he has call to action? 
No. No. Yeah. All right, Nick. No, Nick. So right on Google that we're going to look up food call to actions and we're going to work around that and see how we can um, try that. And then guess what? If you don't, if that doesn't work, Nick, you email us and we try something else. But you must always have, I think that call to action is like um, when carnival is coming and um, you want somebody to do the spray tanning, maybe. You're not gonna say, come and spray tan today. No, you're gonna say, have that beautiful, flawless skin in your carnival costume. So Nick, now we have to look, how are we going to get that? transmitted through to chocolates you know but congratulations on your journey <laughs> i'm gonna ask one last question because mario sure. asked this question on both <laughs> platforms of the questions and answers but also on the chat okay. uh, so mary's asking is, this a, is it a, is it a good thing to send out service before launching a new product or just advertise on the different networks well it's like we're on jeopardy okay so um <laughs> the survey thing sometimes can be stressful because a lot of people don't have the time unless it's like a three thing three things that you're yes you are knowing to um what i normally do before i sew a lot of dresses i put out one if it's a new kind of style and i put ads on it and i see what the response is like and then from that i kind of decide whether I'm going along and making a dozen or not making a dozen or if I'm going to make it in colors or not in colors. So the survey would be better if on the Instagram live feed, you put it there and then have that yes or no. You know, they have the, the poll thing where you can yes or no it and you put your question there. It's better to put it there because it's kind of like an easier read and reach. But I find that surveys aren't always very great because not a lot of people want to take part in them. So now say you get back your survey results and only 10 people took a part in it. That's not a real survey because you would have needed 50 to come up with a conclusive answer. So would it be better to put it on your live and ask each question each day and see what the response is like? Um, I would rather that than the survey, to be honest. Mm. Anything else, Christina? Yes, one last time? one. Sure, Amy, no uh, Ines Keen has asked us, and I think that this is a, the best question to, to end up all these sessions with you, Tamia. Thank you very oh much my gosh. for being part of this. So A okay. said, um, if you could give one, uh, give uh, one, one, if you can give one piece of advice on digital marketing to an entrepreneur working as a one-man show, what would it be? Um, it would be that you have to give a certain amount of time to your brand. So whatever day you're not working, you have to do three hours, create your content and give that time to your brand. So um, my store is not my real job. So my real job is stush marketing because that's the bread and butter and that makes a lot more and teaching and all of that. But I make sure each week that I put a certain amount of time to the brand. So you have to kind of take out that three hour window, two hour window every week and create your content so that even if you're at work you can post quickly even if you can't post you can ask a friend to post and make them an admin on your page make them an editor but um yeah you need to decide on three hours a week that you're going to commit to your brand creating content calling people that, that you need to make a list of where you plan to go and then how you plan to get there do i need to call the pharmacies do i need to call hairdressers do i need to call um hotels do I need to call gift shops so every week you should call at least one place about where the, the item that you have and you should have a little e-kit that can show the photo of the items the front and back like Christina said and what's great about it and send somewhere so you have to make that three hour commitment I'm going to call one place whether they turn me down or not I don't really care I call anyway so I'm going to call one place I'm going to create content for the whole week and I'm going to also go to Google and see what's trending and what is new about my product. You can actually go to Google and put in the name of whatever you're, you're selling and they will actually email you um, information each time on the internet it comes up. So you can do that as well, but you have to be, yeah, you're working your full-time job, but you have to also be up to date of everything that's happening and then follow brands that are international that sell what you sell. Cool. <laughs> thank you very much Demia. i think this was a great session and, and many people have already commented that i want to thank 
uh, you uh, and Stash Marketing once again for participating okay. in this webinar series and for all the participants see you next Thursday we will have this session on Instagram uh, so we'll see you here and thank you again to Caribbean Export um, as ITC Alliances for Action we're very proud that they're part of uh, one of our partners in, Cari in the Caribbean um, and also thanks uh, to, to who made this possible that is the European Union um, um, the, the UKTP program, Cari Forum, uh, and the Organization of African, Caribbean, and Pacific States. So thank you very much, everyone, uh, and see you next Thursday. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for having us. Bye. Bye. Thank you.